So we're going to start with example 13 and I've just written the shortcuts if you weren't able to spot it. Essentially all we do is we differentiate with respect to y and multiply by dy by dx. It's very important that we remember that we must multiply by dy by dx um, when we're working with y terms within this topic. I've skipped example 12 because we did that one um, in the last video. The first one we're going to start with is differentiate with respect to x e to the 2x y and the first very important thing is you must realize that this is two functions that are being multiplied together so we've obviously got to use the product rule for this question okay so u dv by dx plus v du by dx Notice it didn't tell you to use the product rule. Like you'd have to got to spot if you get a question like this. Oh, it's implicit differentiation and it's a product, um, and it's just saying differentiate it. Okay, so let's start by saying what well, u would equal e to the two x, and v would equal y. So we need to differentiate with respect to x. So du by the x. is 2e to the 2x. Just to remember the rule for exponentials, power stays the same, multiply the front by the derivative, which is just 2. Now you've probably never really thought about this, even though you've been doing these for over a year. Like if you want to differentiate y, like and we're differentiating with respect to x, like we're just gonna say well dv by the x. And then when you differentiate y, you're clearly just gonna get dy by the x, aren't you? But if you follow the rule if we differentiate with respect to y, well, the derivative of y is 1. You know, x differentiates to 1, y differentiates to 1, if you're going to differentiate with respect to y, and then you multiply by dy by dx. Okay. Not important that you actually use this for this question. You could just write dy by dx, but we'll see in the next example it is important that we use this. And then we just apply the product rule, so it's u times by dv, so that would be e to the 2x times by dy by dx plus <coughs> v times by du which is y multiplied by 2 e to the 2x. Now I'm just going to write the number at the front so if I'm doing this times by this I'll put the 2 at the front and then I'll put the y next and the e to the 2x goes after that. And I could obviously if I wanted to take a factor of e to the 2x out so it depends on what the question asks afterwards. Next example, example 14. The question actually says differentiate with respect to x, but if you look at the answer on the sheet, it, we're actually going to find dy by dx equals. So our function that we're working with is y equals, so you might be thinking, oh, well, it's explicit, but then if you keep reading, it's, it's clearly not. It's a function with x's and y's in. So if we do get a question like this, you just need to take a step back and go, well, clearly this is implicit differentiation. Okay, it probably won't mention it in the question. So we want to somehow differentiate this and end up with dy by dx equals. The first thing to realize is that we have to differentiate the whole of this function. Okay, so every term in this equation, I need to differentiate with respect to x. Now, if we start on the left-hand side, if we differentiate y with respect to x, that's going to give us dy by dx. Now I also need to differentiate the right hand side. So if I differentiate 2x with respect to x, that would just be 2. Minus 3y, now this is where we're going to have to use this rule because it's a function of y. So minus 3y, if I differentiate that, I would get minus 3. But there's the crucial thing. Like We have to remember that when we differentiate a function of y, we also have to multiply by dy by dx. The last one, x, y, again, we've got a product of two functions, okay? So if we write it as u, that would be x, times by the derivative of this, which would be dy by the x, plus v, which would be y, times by the derivative of u, and if you differentiate x, you get 1. So that's just going to be y times 1, which is clearly just y. 
So we need to do a little bit of tidying up for this. Um, we have got dy by dx equals, but if you notice the whole equation, because when we differentiated this, there was more than one y term, there's dy by dx is throughout. And if this happens, all we have to do is, because we want to get dy by dx on its own, just group the dy by dx terms onto the same side of the equation. Okay, so I've got dy by dx minus 3 dy by dx. So if I add 3 dy by dx to both sides, that would give me 4 dy by dx. I've also got plus x dy by dx. So subtracting that would give me minus x dy by dx. Leave the other terms on the right hand side. So I've still got 2 and plus y. And now that we've grouped the dy by the x terms together, we can take a factor of dy by the x out, and we'd be left with 4 minus x. And then simply just divide to, get, to make dy by the x the subject. So dy by the x must equal 2 plus y divided by. Four minus x. Example fifteen, a bit more like an exam style question. Um, we're given a curve, which is sine x plus cos y equals 0 0.5. The domain is between minus pi and pi for x and minus pi and pi for y, and it's just find the coordinates of the stationary point. So if it's, I'm reading this correctly i'm thinking stationary points i'm expecting to potentially get two coordinates maybe more we'll see what happens okay and obviously interpreting the question if i'm being asked about the stationary point i know that at this point the gradient is going to equal zero so it's, we need to interpret this final sentence stationary points that would be when dy by dx equals zero and then we look at our equation and think well i need to differentiate this Oh, there's a function of x and the function of y, so it's implicit differentiation. No product rule, but there is definitely implicit differentiation. So I'm going to differentiate the whole equation with respect to x. A common mistake that people make when they start this is they start by writing dy by dx equals. But please don't do that, okay? It didn't start with y equals, so you're not going to start with dy by dx equals. We just have to differentiate the function. So if I differentiate sine x, I'm going to get cos x. Differentiate cos y. Now this is implicit, so we've got to be careful. So cos goes to negative sine of y. And we also need to multiply that by dy by dx. An unbelievable amount of people will write equals 0 0.5. Please don't do that, okay? You are differentiating the whole function. So if you differentiate a constant, you will get 0. Do not forget to do that. Okay. So what are we going to do now? Like, it's a stationary point. So I suppose we could do a bit of rearranging here. But there is a shortcut, you know. Like if, a lot of people do a lot of extra work on these questions. Like as soon as I see stationary points, I would write dy by dx would equal zero. So that there, we know dy by dx depends that way will equal zero so essentially that whole term will disappear and we're left with cos x equals zero most people won't have spotted that most people i'll show you what most people will have done you'll get the same answer so you'll rearrange so we'd get cos x would equal sine y dy by dx and then you divide, so you get cos x divided by sine y would equal dy by dx. <clears throat> and then you're feeling a bit more confident with yourselves. You're like, well, I've got dy by dx. Now I can think about dy by dx equals zero. So then you get cos x over sine y. Then you say equals zero. And then you think, well, what happens when a fraction equals zero? And we should know that, hopefully. When a fraction is equal to zero, we can multiply up, can't we? And we get cos x equals zero but like look how much extra time you've just spent when you could just say well 
divide by the x equals zero, as soon as you've di differentiated, use the information that you've got in the question and your answer falls out like this. You get the same answer, it's just a bit quicker doing it the other way. So, cos x equals zero, um, we're solving, we're clearly in radians, um, oops. and we're looking for an answer between minus pi and pi, so x would equal cos inverse of zero, x would equal pi over two. If you're going to follow the rules, then 2 pi minus answer would give us 3 pi over 2. But just be careful here, because that's actually too large, isn't it? We want it to be between minus pi and pi. So if that one's too big, just subtract 2 pi. And you'd get minus pi over 2. To be perfectly honest, it's probably better if you just visualise what the cos graph looks like, especially in further maths. Like, the more familiar with the graph we can be, the better. You might just be able to see, well, I know what cos looks like. Um, it's equal to zero, or pi over two, and minus pi over two. Um, and then just to finish the question off, it says find the coordinates of the stationary points. So if x equals pi over two, we'd need to figure out what y was equal to, wouldn't we? If we go back to this equation here, that's going to be able to tell us what y would equal, isn't it? So I've got x equals pi over 2. Let's substitute that into the original equation and see what happens. So sine of pi over 2 plus cos of y would equal 1.5. Sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. Okay, so if we solve this, we're basically saying cos of y is equal to minus 0.5. If we take cos inverse of minus 0.5, that would give us y equals 2 pi over 3. So our stationary point is pi over 2, 2 pi over 3. And if you do it for the other one, I'll skip the working out. It's minus pi over 2. That's going to give us minus 2 pi over 3 for our other stationary point. Okay, so feel free to review the video again if you need to. But... If you're feeling pretty confident on this, have a go at exercise five. Please work through the first page, I'd say at least up to question nine. It, it gets a little bit more difficult when you get on to question 12. Um, so I don't mind if you skim over those, but I would ideally like you to work through the questions up to question 12. Work solutions, I've done them. So just check on connect or check. Uh, on the Teams folder because the work solutions are on there. Some of the questions are a little bit tough, so please use the answers in uh, my work solutions to help. Alright guys, enjoy. Thank you.